And the university says, listen, we cannot accept students from Grenada anymore because Grenada has been delinquent. The question is, who has to shoulder the cost? So don't come and tell me, listen, you have been successful in granting scholarships, but you have not been successful in meeting those obligations. Council of Legal Education, because they, they expanded the um, economic cost to, legal, to the legal fraternity as well. $2.1 million. Midwestern State University, $1.6 million, Mr. Speaker. Shotwood College in Jamaica, yeah, where the teachers went for the early childhood training. They cannot get their certificates. They cannot get their certificates because the past government refused to honor its commitment. Talking about 66,746 US dollars going to Shotwood College. And I don't know if it's Shotwood College They've been very long on the, on the patients. I don't know how long it, it could be. But unless that is paid, Mr. Speaker, and unless we come up with a schedule of payment, the teachers will not get the certificate. So Despite these challenges, Minister Bolson says his government is committed to meeting the educational needs of the country's human resource. He says they must refocus the education system to encourage synergy between what the institutions produce and what is expected in the world of work. The education system must be relevant to the manpower development needs of the country. And I say so, Mr. Speaker, because not only in Grenada, but in a number of developing countries. There is this dysfunctional relationship between what our educational institutions produce and what the world of work demands. And therefore, It is not unusual to have situations where there is an abundance of labor, even educated people coexisting with critical shortages of skilled labor. Mr. Speaker, our role must be to refocus and retool our educational system so at least there could be synergy or better synchronization between what the educational institutions produce and what the world of work demands. The Ministry of Education has been allocated $110.6 million or 10% of the overall budget. A robust tourism plan was unveiled in part on Thursday by Minister on Wednesday, sorry, by Minister for Civil Aviation, Culture and Tourism, Honorable Alexandria Otway Noel. Mrs. Noel was presenting her take on the 2013 estimates of revenue and expenditure. While she outlined the somber state of the sector, the minister also highlighted the plans of her government to turn things around in the industry. The tourism sector has and continues to be affected by high energy prices, high operating costs, and high airfare prices. The Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association reports that occupancy rates in hotels in Grenada is 16% below the regional average. Statistics show total visitor arrivals fell to 361,238 in 2012, compared to 463,400 and 81 in 2009. Cruise ship calls fell from 246 in 2009 to 185 in 2012. As it concerns room stock, that was 1,937 in 2009 compared to 1,889 in 2012. In 2011, the NDC administration, with input from sector representatives, developed a tourism strategy. It was to be implemented by 2014 
2014, but nothing was done. Tourism Minister Alexandria Otway Noel says government will implement the recommendations of that document. I was part of the exercise myself, and I, it would be remiss of me as a minister now for tourism, civil aviation, and culture to allow this document to sit on a shelf and collect dust any longer. Mr. Speaker, as recently as last week, the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association released their own economic recovery plan, which is supported by a detailed stakeholder survey. I want to inform tourism stakeholders that we are going to take this seriously into account. We understand that this is priority, and there are many actions identified in the report that will do justice to our tourism sector. We need to strengthen our destination marketing and our airlift services, Mr. Speaker, and this keeps coming up again and again in all the different reports that are presented to us. Airlift will be heavily emphasized in the creation of the new economy. A budgetary allocation of $12 million went to this cause. Marketing is also a major area of focus, and Mrs. Otway Noel announced that government has secured a private investor to pay for public relations work in Canada, the United States of America, and the United Kingdom. This is an, sorry, Canada, the United States, and the UK. This is an estimated savings to the Board of Tourism, Ministry of Tourism, of 800,000 EC dollars for the two-year contract that we will sign with them. So this is a, an extremely good thing, Mr. Speaker. In 2013, we will be focusing on product development and the direct investment in the tourism sector. And we will work with investors to develop a tourism product that is unique, distinct, and different from the traditional sun, sea, and sand. We have so much to offer, Mr. Speaker, and we have to add some adventure to our product. People are no longer interested in just the sun, sea, and sand. We have to do something different. And of course, our culture and our heritage, which I will speak about later, are the areas that we can really capitalize on. We're in talks with hotel investors and cruise lines to discuss some of the areas that we can improve on. Mrs. Antwi Noel is also responsible for civil aviation and under this department, a number of developmental work is set to take place. There are some urgent infrastructural projects that need to be addressed. And I'll read them, Mr. Speaker. Replacing the consoles and, record and recorders in the air traffic control tower. Resurfacing the runway at Lauriston and also upgrading the terminal building. Resurfacing of the runway at Morris Bishop International Airport. That needs to be done uh, every 15 years or so, Mr. Speaker. And of course, we're purchasing fire trucks for both, both of those airports. And Mr. Speaker, one of the other areas that we're looking at is the construction of FBO, which is a fixed base operation. What that is, Mr. Speaker, it's a private terminal for private planes. And many people who own private planes would not come here unless there is an FBO. It's just about ease of, of service. Sometimes when you get some of these folks, they don't necessarily want to stand in line behind the 300 Virgin Airlines passengers. So it, it opens up new doors to us. And uh, when I was the former chairman of the airport, Mr. Speaker, we had already made the plans. And so it's only now to move forward. Minister for Tourism, Culture and Civil Aviation, Honorable Alexandria Otwe Noel. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. 
the Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Do you really want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back to the broadcast. Youth development ranked among some of the top areas receiving much needed increases in the budgetary allocations. A total of $24.1 million, near 70% increase over 2012, was assigned to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Ecclesiastic Relations. Some of these funds will also go towards the improvement of the Youth Upliftment Program, now to be called the New Imani Program. During his budget presentation, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell clearly stated that young people need access to education, training, scholarships, jobs and opportunities, but above all, hope. In this regard, at the end of April 2013, the administration will officially launch the new Imani program, an improved version of the older program which was launched in 2002, and the Youth Enterprise Initiative and Assistance Program launched by the previous NDC administration in 2009. The new and improved Imani program will place greater focus on training, supervision, certification and employment. The key objectives are one, reducing unemployment and poverty. Two, assisting trainees to develop positive values and attitudes. Three, providing an opportunity for young persons to acquire employable skills. Four, providing an opportunity for young persons to be adequately prepared for the job market through on-the-job training. Five, promoting an entrepreneurial spirit among young people and providing them with training, financing, and other support. And six and lastly, fostering a sense of patriotism in young people through their involvement in community service. Furthermore, Dr. Mitchell announced that government will increase the stipend given to participants under the program. It will also be divided into three levels. A handsome allocation was assigned to the program. Mr. Speaker, Government intends to spend $15.9 million on this program this year. Mr. Speaker, that is only a small down payment, a small down payment, payment on the future of this country. As a consequence, Mr. Speaker, over 2,000 young persons will benefit directly from this program. That works out to be a hundred, of average 150 young persons in every constituency. But clearly, there are different sizes and other factors to take into consideration. So I don't want to hear he got 200 and I get 100. Under the Grenada Youth Enterprise Initiative, young people will have an opportunity to create employment through small business development. An allocation of $2 million will be made available to young people desirous to start or expand their own business. Emphasis will also be placed on training, monitoring and provision of direct support to the young entrepreneurs during the first five years of their business. Dr. Mitchell says government took it one step further to also assist churches in their youth development programs. Mr. Speaker, this government recognizes the important role that our churches do play and can play in youth development. Moreover, this government is mindful of the need to promote a partnership to develop our young 